Hey everyone, welcome to my new program. My name is Mondo. I'm so excited that you can join me today. I have a special show planned just for you. I had the opportunity to sit down and talk to the founder, CEO of Charisma Magazine, Steve Strang. He's the man that has been a part of our lives, impacting our generation or culture with his work. His publishing company, Charisma House, is giving a voice and a platform to hundreds of authors across the world. We had a chance to talk about how we met 21 years ago when I was assisting and driving Pastor Jim Baker around. Those were the early years. You're going to hear stories that have never shared on air before. I asked him about his journey on how Charisma Magazine got started and how he's been able to be on the front line reporting and witnessing the change in our culture today. Our conversation led us to talk about the moments that made headline news and the impact that it had in the world of Christianity. Our conversation led to talk about how he received a call from Donald Trump after he was elected to be the president of the United States. Steve shared with me that the president has something to say to him regarding Stormy Daniels. You know the lady that made headline news? You won't want to miss what Steve had to share. You're going to see a different side of Steve's strength that I think no one has ever seen before. He's funny. You know what? His great, his great sense of humor uh, took me off guard for a minute. But most of all, he's a man that loves God, a man that has a mission to share the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Right now, I want to invite you to have a front row seat and watch my conversation with Steve Strang. Watch this. Steve! Welcome to my dorm room. Should I, uh... You're wearing a jacket, Steve. You want me to roll no, up my no, sleeves no, no. and uh, show you my tats? Good. Yeah, can you please show Charisma for Life? Telling a story to the to the crew here before I went to jail. Excuse me? Are you gonna walk out now? You went to jail? <laughs> yeah, I was making good money gangbanging. Are we on you know? the air? Is this like a joke? We're already started. We're oh. having a conversation. <laughs> okay. I love you, Steve. I've known you what, 20? You know what? I looked for that picture. I was trying to show someone. It's it's lost on my cell phone. Somewhere. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna resend it to you. I love it. I love watching. We gotta put it history. up on the screen. I'm gonna let's do it. We'll do it in post. But I wanted to show it because I remember you when you had your mustache. I love the Magnum PI mustache. Listen, everybody had mustaches back then, and um, I I. I, I I probably shouldn't say this on TV, but I grew it in my 20s so that I would look older. <laughs> we all did that, right? Yeah. And then my wife told me one day I didn't need to try to look older anymore. <laughs> and then everybody to... said, oh, you look so young. I said, gee, I should have done this 10 years ago. <laughs> I, I love that picture. I, I sent it to you. And I said, I wonder if he still remembers that day. I, oh, remember, I remember like if it, it was, was like just... a CBA or something, wasn't it? Yeah. It was CBA. You were like tagging around with Jim. And yeah, yeah. I was assisting him. And, you know, I've been with Jim for about 21 years. It was supposed to be a three-day event, driving him around to his interviews. He had just written the book, I Was Wrong. And the Dream Center, Tommy Barnett and Matthew, I was working with them. Very close circle. I think it was Matthew, Aaron, myself, and another guy. And... They said, can you go drive him around, pick him up? And I said, absolutely, I'll take care of Jim. Never heard of the guy before, right? And How did you not hear of him? He's famous. You didn't I, watch Christian TV. I anymore. did not. You know, I grew up gangbanging. East LA, the gangs was my life. And so religion was really never part of my growing up or even understanding what was going on in, in the religious world. He was world. known to the wider culture. Latinos, you know what? Latinos heard of him. My mother, when she found out that I was picking him up, said, man, I'm picking up Jim Baker. <gasps> Mijito, I love Jim Baker. Oh, so everybody knew him. I just, the street culture just doesn't mix with religion, you know, unless we need something from him, right? 
But when I picked them up, I had I no those clue. Those guys wore crosses around their neck to ward off bad luck or something. I knew you were going to talk about it. I have my <laughs> rosary. But you know, when I met Jim, it was weird because here I am driving this guy around, have no clue who he is, and I start meeting people that really have influence or culture. Not just the Christian, Christian culture, but the culture itself. And that's where you come in. You, you've been around a long time. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Just you've seen a lot of stuff and you've seen and the- I'm still saved. How? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, I'm making light of it. Um, no, really, that, it's not a joke. How do you stay saved after seeing, you know, great moments that go down in history, like the PTL scandal, the Jimmy Swaggart's moments, and on and on and on. Yeah, we've had to cover all those things. How do you stay sane? Well, first of all, you have to understand a little bit about life, and that is that human beings are human beings. And understand, and you know, the Bible, there was all kinds of bad things happen to people, and people double-cross people. And you have to realize that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. <laughs> and this is manifest in lots and lots of ways. You know, I even think that that's true of what's happening in our country being so divided with Donald Trump and everything else. But the spiritual warfare goes on all the time. So whether you're a gangbanger and murder, you know, or in a drug cartel or whatever, we would think of those people as evil, but you can get in the church and listen to some of the church fights oh. on the deacon board over what color to have the carpet in the church. That, they get, <laughs> get gangster, they yeah. get, listen, I when I went from being in, in East LA, being part of the gang culture, being one of the shot callers, and when I came into the Christian world, I don't know if I can say this, it's almost run like a Christian mafia type of way. When they want your suit to be hung, they make it happen. And it's scary to be in the hands of angry, jealous preachers, man. Well, that's why we need Jesus. And we're all sinners saved by grace. And, you know, when I wrote these books on Trump, I was invited on the secular, some of the secular news stations. Which, by the way, you did great. Well, thanks. I love watching you. I follow you on Twitter. I follow you yeah. on social media. I enjoy what you have to say. Well, I was invited about the Stormy Daniels thing. And my wife, Joy, and I had been on a cruise we were out of the country. Well, guess what? On a cruise, you don't get much news. No. And I kind of heard about Stormy Daniels, but you know, all of a sudden it was just like everywhere. And I didn't, you know, how was I going to opine about Stormy Daniels? I barely knew who she was. <laughs> of course, I found out that, you know, she was this porn star that yeah. claimed, claimed to have a relationship with the president and, and shook him down. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. And rich people, whether it's that or something else, often will pay just to have something go away. Yeah. So anyway, my wife said, don't go on those shows. She says it's a, a den of vipers. And she's probably right. But I I don't know, I just felt, I'm gonna go. And I thought, what's the worst thing that can happen? They can't fire me. They can't kill me. <laughs> um, they can embarrass me and that's about it. And yeah. if it's that bad, I'll just never do it again. But you know, they asked, how can, people that believe the Bible vote for someone like Donald Trump who has done all these things, like yeah. this a porn star. And I said, well, first of all, all that's between him and God. But I said, everybody that has accepted Christ has done something in their life they would not like on the front page. Like exactly. You know, even if it's like getting drunk at a high school party or something. I yeah. mean, even, even the nicest Christian <laughs> has done something. And of course, I've done something. And so when, you, when Christ has forgiven you and when you walk in humility, mm -hmm. you can put up with the shortcomings of other people. So then Allison Camerato on CNN said, well, I thought your Bible said you had to ask for forgiveness. And I said, well, first of all, I'm glad you're quoting the Bible. <laughs> And, At least they uh, know it, right? And you know, I, we went on and talked about other things, but I was thankful. I actually had an opportunity to uh, preach the gospel in, you know, in the seven or eight minutes I was on, where I said, the essence of Christianity is forgiveness. Yeah. We've all been forgiven. We can forgive Donald Trump. Absolutely. And I'll tell you something here. There's a little bit like a scoop, but 
The president actually called me on his cell phone, on my cell phone. Really? And the reason was, is I was trying to get an interview for my second book. It was very close to when it went to press. And we were like, if we get this interview, how do we put it in at the last minute? And I told him, uh, we talked for about 10 minutes and he was asking me about the book. And I told him that I had defended him on some of these shows, just wow. like I told you. Yeah, wow. And he said, and I'm not sure this is on the record. I, I'll find out <laughs> if I said something I shouldn't, but he said, you don't need to defend me. I didn't do anything with that woman. Wow. And of course, this is what he says publicly. And I just thought it was kind of interesting. We were in a private conversation. It was not being recorded, I promise you, or at least it wasn't on my end. Yeah. And he didn't need to say that. And. You know, my feeling is when something happens a long time ago, and of course he has things in his past that he's admitted to, you don't, but we're not, we're not meant to judge. No, not at all. And I, I like to ask, did they ask this stuff about Barack Obama or George W. Bush or Clinton? Of no, course not. No. In fact, somebody told me they were glad that Donald Trump has given the news media a sense of morality yeah. on what's right and what's wrong. That's right. <laughs> you and know, they hold him to a higher standard. Yeah, it's like finally we get a, a president that's human, right? We get to see all his faults through the eyes of the media. Well, they're all human, of course. But they act like But he's not else. a politician, you exactly. know? Exactly. And every, every single president has either been an elected official or a general. And of course, if you're a general, that's a lot of responsibility yeah. in running a big organization. But Donald Trump was neither of those. And, you know, it's like America was wanting an outsider. and. I've said a lot of times that he was not my first pick. You know, yeah. I kind of reacted to the things that make people not like him yeah. until I got to know that really the man changed. He really did, probably about 15 years ago. And um, just this week, I was with Paula White Kane, mm -hmm. and I knew her back in that era. And she told me and Joy over dinner one night, we were talking about her ministry or something, and she said that her ministry got a call from a celebrity on The Apprentice named Donald Trump. And he, he said he watched her on TV and he had some questions about God. And I thought to myself, isn't that strange? <laughs> and then I didn't think about it again until he you know, emerged. But when I heard that Paula had become his friend, um, you know, God uses, I would have never expected Paula to be the one. No, But she all. became his friend and kind of mentored him as much as you can. It's like Dr. James Dobson said, if anything, he's a baby Christian. But I documented my book, God at Donald Trump. Notice how I kind of- Oh yeah, that in. you gotta read um, the book. He, he told uh, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland personally that he watched them on TV and his conversation was such that they could tell that he really had. He so told the same thing to David Jeremiah. Yeah. And he told the same thing to Jim Baker. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I'm not sure I watch Christian television <laughs> that much, but you know, and, and somehow the Lord got through to a man who made his money in gambling. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> you know, <laughs> several marriages. Yeah. A couple of fairly well-known affairs that were on the front page of all the tabloids back in the day. Um, and he was a celebrity. Listen, the people in New York and Hollywood loved him. Yeah. Until he became a conservative. Now go figure. Now they can't stand him because he, you know, they're culturally, they're kind of winning. Yeah. And he, he's a disruptor. He's kind of changed all that. Well, yeah. I really believe he's accepted Christ. He, you know, all the stuff that we're kind of alluding to all happened a long, long time it's ago. It's like we forget what we looked like when we accepted Christ in the beginning, right? I That's right. Man, I can go back and remember how many times I failed as a baby Christian drinking and smoking and, and cussing and don't do that. But it took time to develop really the characteristics of what a Christian is. And you're watching a live event take place with a man that accepted Jesus in the development of or evolution, right? The evolution of going from being a sinner to now being born again. It's, it's not pretty, it's rough. I gotta ask you this though. Everyone knows you as the CEO. Everyone knows you as this great book publisher. And you stayed, in, you stayed behind the scenes for a long time. You've interviewed presidents. I wanna know who is Stephen Strang? 
Who are you? Who? What makes you? What's your passion? What's what are you? What's on your playlist? What what are you listening to? Who is Steve? At the end of the day, who is Stephen Stray? Well, I was raised in a Christian home. Um, I was born in Springfield, not too far from where we're sitting right now. And so, as a child, all I knew was the church. In fact, when I was on it, we were talking about Trump, and MSNBC had me on on Easter. <laughs> Easter, <laughs> and they showed this picture of oh, Trump boy. going to church with Melania, yeah. and they were saying, well, what do you think about tr the fact that Trump only goes to church on Easter? Yeah. <laughs> I thought, what am I going to say? <laughs> so I said, well, listen, when I was growing up, I had to go to church every time the doors were open, and I think a Christian ought to be at church every time the doors open. Absolutely. I think Donald Trump ought to go to church more often, but he's busy, you know, yeah. and, 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 and it's not all about how often he goes to church, it's, you know, his policies and everything else. So. How did you find to become a journalist? I decided, I, secular journalism was very liberal back then. I was marginalized as an evangelical Christian mm. in the newsroom. They, people weren't really nasty to me, but I also wasn't included in anything. And so I'm a guy who wanted to serve the Lord and what was I gonna do? Well, I got an idea to do a little church magazine and there's kind of a story behind it. But basically I had to go out and create a platform for myself to do Christian journalism. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, some people would go out and get a job. I had yeah. to go create my own job. Wow. So I've worked for myself since I was, you know, in my 20s. Before social media, before oh, every job. You've yeah. seen the culture change and that's why I wanted to sit with you, have a conversation with you about life because we want, we need to talk. We need to communicate more. I think you, your generation, my generation, agree to disagree on a lot of different issues. Where are we as a culture, and where where do you think we're going in the next five, ten years, with the millennial generation really stepping into a vehicle that I don't think we have the experience to go anywhere right now. Well. You know, times are pretty bad. I mean, I, we write about it. I talked about it in God and Donald Trump, of course. But my grandfather, you know, who died in 1972, I re remember having a conversation with him one time. He was sure that all the young people were gonna become communists. And the era was pretty bad. Yeah. And we tend to forget it. But when I was in high school, Martin Luther King was assassinated, Bobby Kennedy, uh, the Democrats had riots at the uh, 1968 Democratic Convention. John Kennedy had just been killed. We were in Vietnam. All the young people were tripping out on LSD. It was flower power and hippies. And it looked like my whole generation was going down, um, you know, it was going straight to hell. Then God steps in. There was a Jesus movement. Yeah. There were hippies who are getting saved, getting off of drugs. A lot of these hippies um, are Christian leaders today. I was actually influenced by the Jesus movement myself. Where are you? Because I kind of got away from the Lord in college and tried to sow. My wild oats weren't really that wild, but <laughs> I wasn't raised that way, let's put it that way. And, and it was new and fresh and they were excited about God. And same thing with the charismatic movement uh, in the Catholic Church, yeah. you know, we talked about that. That yeah. happened in the same era. So here, and something shifted. You know, the whole hippie thing went yeah. away. You don't find hippies, maybe half a dozen in the redwood forest in Northern California, yeah, that's exactly. it. But not a whole generation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, things became a little more conservative under Reagan. They kind of shifted back with Clinton. You know how it is, it's kind of back and forth. And yes, the culture is getting worse with the Supreme Court legalizing certain things and all, but you know what? The problems we have really go back to the 1840s with Darwin. Wow. That's really when the culture rejected the Bible as the final, uh, the final say on how man was created. And if you, don't, if, if you think of man as just a bunch of cells that, that evolved out of the ooze or however they say it. Yeah. And you don't think man has a soul, of course you're gonna act this way. Hmm. And so the church became less and less and less important. And our current one, actually you can trace back to Woodrow Wilson when uh, liberalism really got a hold in this country. 
and it slowed down with the depression because everybody was so poor, you know, I mean, they were just kind of, and then World War II, where, can you imagine what the world would be like if Hitler had won? Oh. And how can one country like Germany defeat the world? Well, if they intimidate everyone and then everyone just gave in to them, you know, like um, France just surrendered. Yeah. They were wanting England to just surrender. You know, they would have had such a stronghold that it would have been almost impossible for the United States to have uh, opposed them. So when you see these, and, and of course, if you go back in history, even with the Reformation, and there's lots of examples, but we don't hear history anymore. We no. don't talk about history. We're, we're trying they to don't, erase... And they certainly don't teach it in the public schools. No, we're rewriting history. And that leads me to this point here, and our time is almost up. What is your message for this generation? Your generation is gonna to have to sort it out like every generation before. And as Christians, we believe that God has a plan. We don't understand the plan. Um, we have, you know, it sounds like a cliche, but we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. I love it. Uh, we can't necessarily just do things like the older generations, but you know, the message has been the same. You gotta believe in Jesus. You gotta be right with God. You yeah. need to, the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know, there's always a remnant. Now, if you listen to the media, you wouldn't think they even exist. Yeah. That's why, part of the reason why you have alternative media. I mean, the people in New York, they would never talk about this kind of stuff, would they? I'm talking about the news media. Up there. No, of course absolutely not. not. They, they, they marginalize us. They, these, you know, these are deplorables. Yeah. <laughs> They're people that cling to their guns and to God. But we can't be affected by that. We can't be affected by the culture. And that's why I'm so proud of my son because he is speaking to his culture in relevant ways. I don't even know most of the people he has on his cover because <laughs> <laughs> they're pop culture yeah. <laughs> that I don't follow. But yet he's, you know, saying stay true to Jesus. Um, you know, treat people right. You know, your generation has a very soft heart for things like justice. Absolutely. And for the downtrodden and they, they like to support causes. Now, I like to say that I like to support causes that don't cost them anything, like wearing a little bracelet or something. <laughs> but, oh, you know, boy. you guys will sort it out. And your generation isn't nearly as bad as mine was. I'm glad to hear that. I think there's hope. There's always hope. That you said it best. Let us sort it out, have the wisdom, we have the strength. We move it forward That's right. and get her ready for the next one coming after us, right? I'm telling you, you we, we got to do this again, Steve. I really enjoyed your time. Um, we got a lot to learn. That's right. I'm proud of you. Appreciate it. Not you. very many people have come out of the gangs of L.A. and have their own TV show and well, I think on you, Christian TV every day and get to marry the Lennon Come sisters. Come on, somebody, say it. <laughs> do, they, do your people know who you married? Yes, sir. Okay. Unbelievable. You need to have her on the show. I am. I am. We're planning to have my wife. Then I have the, the Lennon sisters come on. And I might just and take listen, the cameras and go to their house. It's the house. grace of God that someone who looks like her married <laughs> someone who looks like you. <laughs> You're terrible. Exactly. That is really the grace right? of God. Oh, I'm telling you, man. Then come up with twins, the twin kids. They're beautiful. They can sing. Uh, they're unbelievable. So you have had a blessed, blessed life. Yes, sir. And I hope that you stay strong because you're about two years away from midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him talk that foolish talk. That was Steve Strang. Wow, what an incredible journey this man has been on. Today, Steve continues to impact our generation, our culture, by reporting the news from a Christian perspective. Steve, thank you so much for taking time to sit down and talk with me and sharing what our generation must do to continue to share the gospel across the world. I want to thank Pastor Jim and Lori Baker for giving me this great opportunity to bring the show to you. They have believed in me from day one. They have mentored me, guided me through difficult times, and today I'm honored to call them mom and dad. I get to have the honor every day to be a part of co-hosting the Jim Baker Show. This show is broadcasting all around the world. I have learned so much from the past 21 years working and serving under them 
This two incredible people that are not afraid to identify with broken and the bruised. They love you. I want you to know that they love you. And they have dedicated their whole entire lives to help people by stepping out in the front lines to bring a message that we need to hear right now. You can watch the Jim Baker Show every day on the PTL network. But don't forget also that you can watch Life with Lori. It's a brand new show dedicated to women and men as well. But she speaks mainly to the heart of women. Her story is one that you will relate to. She is real, and she speaks into your heart. You can watch Life with Lori on the PTL network every single day. And by the way, you can now watch right now from your iPads or your phones by just downloading our brand new PTL television network app on your phone or on your iPad. You can watch at your convenience on demand 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also stay connected with me through social media. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I want to connect with you and hear from you. I want to hear what's on your heart. I want to have a conversation that you're having at home with your friends and your family. But mainly, I want to connect with you by standing in prayer for our generation and our culture. We need prayer more than ever today in America. I want to tell you something. We can't do it without family. We can't do it with one another. And today, I want to give a special shout out to my beautiful wife and my amazing twins, Mila and Mateo. They have changed my life. They have believed in me, and they love me unconditionally. Without them, I would not be able to be where I am today. I love them so much, and I thank you for believing in me and standing with me in this beautiful journey that I'm in. And mainly, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for watching today. I want to thank you for standing with us. And I hope that you know that no matter what's going on, the most important message that I can bring to you today is that you will have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. He's our only hope. It's what changed my life. It's the reason why I've been able to make it out of the gang life to where I am today. So my hope is that you will receive Jesus in your heart. My hope is that you will ask him and let him become your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I hope you make that decision today to receive Jesus in your heart. He changed my life. He can change your life. There's nothing greater than being in the hands and the perspective and being able to know that God has a plan for your life. Thank you for watching today. Until next time, I want to encourage you to keep the faith. I'm so sorry for this oh, yeah. delay. I didn't realize we were doing this shoot until it occurred to me <laughs> that I should read the paper that they gave me last night. Good to see you. How are you doing? Thank you for doing this. I love it. I, I wanted to do it for you. This is the dorm. Yeah, just come in. Oh, wait. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I look like I'm the professor. Visiting. You're the professor. The professor visiting the dorm. <laughs> do we need help with a uh, assignment? Am I, I going to make it through school, Professor Land?